Does WWE pay for a wrestler's medical expenses if they get injured? The answer is sometimes yes, and other times no. If a wrestler gets injured during a match, then WWE covers 100% of the medical costs. However, WWE only covers in-ring injuries. For any other injury, wrestlers are on their own. For example, Cody Rhodes tore his pectoral muscle during training. Since it happened outside of WWE, Cody had to pay the medical expenses himself. There are a few tricks WWE uses to make the wrestlers seem taller than they actually are. One is the referees. WWE won't even consider hiring someone to be a referee if they are 6 feet or taller. The shorter the referee, the taller a wrestler will appear. Likewise, WWE often hires petite women to be backstage interviewers and will have them go barefoot so they appear as short as possible next to the wrestlers. In some cases, WWE will even have an interviewer spread out their legs to make them appear shorter. Wrestlers will also give themselves a few extra inches of height by wearing lifts in their boots. Chris Jericho, Mick Foley, and Kane all wore special boots at one point in their career to make them look a little taller. Why did Randy Orton change the RKO? Early in his career, Orton would usually perform the RKO with one hand. However, as the years went on, Orton would start performing his finisher with two hands more and more often. The reason for the change was to make it easier on Orton's back and shoulders when he hit the mat. It was all around safer for both Randy and his opponent. There's a reason why The Undertaker's WWE entrance was so long, and it's not just because his character was supposed to be evil and serious. The dead man revealed that he would make his entrance longer if he had a bad opponent. Like if I was working with somebody that, that was pretty limited, thought I was gonna have just a really shitty match with, I was like, man, I'm gonna get my money's worth out of this entrance. There were times I would, I would take a little bit of extra time because I knew the match was gonna be horrible, so I figured I might as well give it to them on the entrance because they're gonna be disappointed once this bell rings. Secrets behind WWE finishers. The New Day's finisher is called the Midnight Hour because that's when a New Day starts. The RKO is just Randy Orton's initials, Randall Keith Orton. Steve Austin's finisher is called the Stunner because he used to be called Stunning Steve Austin. Bret Hart's finisher is called the Sharpshooter because a sharpshooter is a person who is highly skilled at shooting a weapon, and Bret's nickname is the Hitman. Cesaro is from Switzerland and his finisher is called the Neutralizer because the Swiss are notoriously neutral. Liv Morgan's finisher is called Oblivion and she hits it from the middle rope. Liv is in the middle of the word Oblivion. Do you know why WWE always has the good guys on the left side of the ring during tag team matches? The reason is so viewers can see the emotions on the wrestlers' faces. Psychologically, people can better connect with someone when they can see their expressions. There's one thing that you have never seen happen during a WWE match, and that's wrestlers sneezing. The reason is that it's impossible for it to happen. Just like any physical activity, wrestling causes your body to clear its airwaves so they can take in bigger breaths and get enough oxygen. Additionally, a wrestler's body releases adrenaline when performing, which also causes their airways to remain clear. These open airways prevent things from tickling your nose or throat, which is what causes sneezing. Basically, WWE wrestlers' bodies are too busy to sneeze when they are wrestling. Additionally, this is why wrestlers can still compete, even if they have a cold. If you look at WWE wrestlers' chest, they appear to separate and leave a larger and larger gap as they continue to wrestle. Why is this? Part of it is due to all the abuse wrestlers take over the years, but there's more to it. For example, Kofi Kingston has a genetic issue where his pectoral muscles connect from the sides of his sternum, rather than the center. This, and all the punishment his body has taken over the years, has caused his chest to separate. Scott Steiner is another wrestler with a noticeable gap in his pectoral muscles. This was partially due to a bad accident Steiner suffered in the ring. While wrestling a match, Scott Steiner got kicked in the throat, which caused internal bleeding. Surgeons had to cut part of his chest, but this left a large gap in between Scott Steiner's pectoral muscles. This WWE match was only two seconds long. On the September 4th, 2000 episode of Raw, Taz demanded two matches, one against Chris Jericho and the other against Jerry Lawler. The Raw commissioner, Mick Foley, decided to put Taz in a tag team match against both men, and he had a surprise tag team partner for the human suplex machine. The mystery partner turned out to be Midian. This caught Taz off guard, which led to this. Why did Triple H change his attire and start wearing biker shorts? In 2003, at a non-televised WWE event in San Jose, California, Triple H wrestled his first ever match against Goldberg. During the fight, Triple H got injured and tore his groin. To help him walk, the game had to start wearing biker shorts. However, the shorts were so tight that multiple people had helped Triple H get into them. 
WWE wrestlers who are only one title away from becoming Triple Crown Champions. Bobby Lashley has won the WWE Championship and Intercontinental Championship. The Almighty just needs to win a tag team title to become a Triple Crown Champion. Kevin Owens is a former tag team champion and Intercontinental Champion. While KO has also held the Universal Championship, he needs to win the WWE title in order to officially be called a Triple Crown Champion. The same goes for Braun Strowman and Finn Balor. John Cena and Sheamus, on the other hand, both need an Intercontinental Championship reign in order to be called Triple Crown Champions. WWE wrestlers hate Peacock, and this is why. Back when WWE did actual pay-per-view events, wrestlers who competed on the pay-per-view would get a percentage of the money people paid to watch the event. Additionally, when the pay-per-view events were released on DVD, wrestlers would also get a cut of the DVD sales. However, in 2014, WWE's pay-per-view events started being streamed on the WWE Network, which later became part of Peacock. Since the pay-per-view events were no longer actual pay-per-views, wrestlers didn't get a cut of the money generated by these events. Additionally, WWE stopped putting their shows on DVD, which means wrestlers no longer make money from those either. Why did WWE change all its ring ropes to white? There are two reasons. WWE has special lights that they shine in the crowd during televised events. The lights are either red or blue, depending on the show. This can cause the ring to blend with the audience when the ropes are the same color as the lights. To fix this, WWE switched the ring ropes to white so they would contrast better no matter the show. Additionally, the white ropes help the wrestlers stand out and draw the viewers' attention to them. A female WWE wrestler who was once allowed to wrestle while intoxicated. In February 2019, at an untelevised WWE show in Saginaw, Michigan, Alicia Fox was scheduled to compete in a six-woman tag team match. When she arrived at the arena, Fox was drunk. Despite this, Arn Anderson, who was a WWE agent and in charge of the match, still allowed Alicia to go out and perform. Nothing serious happened. However, Anderson was soon fired for allowing Fox to compete while intoxicated because it put her and the other wrestlers in danger. What's under a WWE ring? Besides their usual stuff like tables, chairs, and other foreign objects, there is also a person down there. And I'm not talking about Hornswoggle or the Boogeyman. A WWE production member is stationed under the ring at every televised show, with their job being to tighten cables and make necessary repairs on the fly. The production member is also responsible for making sure that weapons are in the right spot when wrestlers go to grab them. The WWE crew member under the ring also has a monitor and headset, allowing them to see what's happening and communicate. This is why you'll sometimes see a glowing monitor under the the rain when a wrestler pulls up the rain skirt. WWE once had to censor Randy Orton's RKO because it was too violent. In 2012, WWE launched a show called Saturday Morning Slam. Unlike WWE's other shows that were rated PG, Saturday Morning Slam was rated G. This meant wrestling moves that were too violent couldn't be shown. Even some WWE theme songs had to be censored. When Randy Orton made his first appearance on Saturday Morning Slam, he went to hit his opponent with the RKO. The finisher was too violent for a G-rated show, so the camera awkwardly cut away and missed the move. Randy Orton. 99.9% .9 of people did not catch WWE's sneaky reference to CM Punk before he returned. Watch this clip and see if you catch it. And WWE Survivor Series is presented by Credit One Bank. Get cash back rewards and live large. Did you spot it? If you look at the blue graphic on the right side, a picture appears for a split second of CM Punk with his arms crossed. Every black person who has won the WWE Championship has lost the title to Brock Lesnar. In 2002, Brock defeated the first black WWE Champion, The Rock, at SummerSlam. In October 2019, Lesnar defeated the second black WWE Champion, Kofi Kingston, in 7 seconds. In January 2022, Brock pinned the fourth black WWE Champion, Big E, in a fatal 5-way match. Then, about one month later, Brock Lesnar took the WWE title from the third black WWE Champion, Bobby Lashley, by defeating him and four other wrestlers inside the Elimination Chamber. Did you know, when a WWE wrestler wins money in the bank, they have to carry the briefcase with them everywhere they go, even when they aren't at shows. The reason for this is so that the wrestler can have the briefcase with them when they do media appearances. When CM Punk won the money in the bank, he actually started carrying his gear in the briefcase. In January 2020, Becky Lynch said this, I think the best thing for the women's division right now is that we eliminate the term women's right? One day after Lynch said this, WWE announced they would remove the word women's from the NXT Women's Championship and the title would simply be known as the NXT Championship. This caused confusion for obvious reasons since there was already a title called the NXT Championship. Less than two weeks after the name change, the title went back to being called the NXT Women's Championship. 
Why did Sin Cara botch so much? Before he came to WWE, Sin Cara wrestled in Mexico under the name Mystico. He had been competing for over 10 years and was one of the most popular luchadors. So why did he have so much trouble in WWE? One reason is that the mask WWE gave him didn't allow for much visibility. On top of that, WWE used special lighting for his matches, making it even harder to see. Additionally, Sin Cara wrestled a much different style than the majority of WWE wrestlers, and he didn't make a big enough effort to change. However, the biggest reason Sin Cara botched move so much was that he didn't speak English, making him unable to communicate with the other wrestlers. Wrestling facts that will mess your perception of time. Roman Reigns' Universal Championship reign has lasted longer than the Attitude Era. TNA Impact Wrestling filmed their events in HD four years before WWE made the switch. Brock Lesnar's first run in WWE lasted only two years, while his current run has been going on for over 11. Despite this, Brock has wrestled 26 fewer matches than he did in his first run. AJ Styles' WWE career has been as long as Stone Cold Steve Austin's, seven years. Despite Shayna Baszler making her WWE debut in 2017, she is still older than Natalia, who had her first match in 2008. AEW wrestler Julia Hart was still in high school when the premiere episode of Dynamite aired. In 2023, Triple H and Batista are the same age that Ric Flair was when Evolution formed, 54. How much money do WWE wrestlers get from their merchandise? Wrestlers get a 25% royalty on all their merch sales. That sounds like a lot, but that 25% is only on the profit, not the total cost. According to former WWE wrestler Ryback, he said that wrestlers usually only made about $1 on a $30 t-shirt. Additionally, if there are multiple wrestlers on a shirt or piece of merchandise, then the 25% is split among all the wrestlers evenly. However, bigger name wrestlers like Brock Lesnar can negotiate a higher percentage of merchandise sales. For less popular wrestlers, they pretty much have to accept whatever WWE offers them. If you watch just about any WWE show, it looks like they are always sold out. However, if you see videos taken by fans, you'll notice that there are sometimes a lot of empty seats. At the 2022 SummerSlam event, WWE said the attendance was 48,449, but reports say that the actual number was closer to 35,000. When they can't fill an arena, WWE will have all the fans sit in one section and only show that part on camera to give the illusion of a packed building. However, videos and pictures from fans will show how full the arena actually was. This WWE mystery has never been solved. In 2005, WWE had a three-week long draft. The WWE Champion, John Cena, was the first wrestler drafted, and he went from SmackDown to Raw. This left SmackDown without a world title, so the general manager, Teddy Long, announced there would be a new SmackDown Championship. A six-man elimination match was set up to crown the new champion, which was won by JBL. Teddy Long had the SmackDown title in a black bag, but revealed that the World Heavyweight Champion, Batista, had been drafted to SmackDown. Therefore, the new world title was not needed. Fans never got to see what the title looked like, and it's still unknown what was inside the bag. If you look at the WWE roster, you'll notice that almost all the wrestlers have clean shaven bodies, including the men. There are a few reasons why wrestlers don't have any body hair. One is muscle definition. Wrestlers want to look their best, and having no hair allows their bodies and muscles to pop and stand out. Another reason wrestlers don't usually have body hair is for safety. When a wrestler has hair, they run the risk of it getting caught on something or creating a rash. One other reason wrestlers do this is to respect their opponent. Bacteria can build up in hair and create body odor, which which can happen fast since wrestlers sweat so much. No one wants to be put in a headlock or another close contact move by someone who smells bad, so out of courtesy, wrestlers shave their bodies. This WWE fan is an absolute genius. A man attended Monday Night Raw, got a front row seat, and brought with him a giant QR code. When people watching the show scanned it with their phones, it took them to a concrete company's website called Dreamcrete. The same man who attended Raw appears in pictures on the company's social media. This guy not only got to enjoy the show, but also got potentially millions of people to check out his business. Do WWE commentators know the outcome of matches? It's actually up to the commentators if they want to know. Some commentators will read the script so they don't say something incorrect or so they understand a storyline. However, other commentators deliberately avoid knowing what's going to happen. Michael Cole has said he avoids looking at the script so that all his reactions are genuine. This is the true story behind one of WWE's most hated moments. During a show, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, pulled a child from the crowd and told the kid if he could bounce a ball 15 times, he would win $500. The young fan was about to win the money when DiBiase kicked the ball away and the child lost. Fans were furious about this, but WWE got permission from the boy's mother to do the stunt. For being part of the show, the young WWE fan got to go backstage and take pictures with his favorite wrestlers. Almost 35 years after the incident, Ted DiBiase and the fan reunited and took a picture together. 
Did you know? There's actually two to three versions of every championship in WWE. Each belt has one version that's only used on TV. It's purposely only used at televised events to prevent it from getting worn out and looking bad. There's also a second version of every WWE title belt that the champion carries with them wherever they go. Wrestlers will use this belt at autograph signings, media appearances, and even non-televised shows. For some championships, they also have a third version that's kept at WWE's headquarters in Sanford, Connecticut. This one is used for photo shoots and media. Another reason WWE always has two versions of every belt is so that if one gets lost, they will always have a backup. Why does John Cena wave his hand and say, while creating his iconic theme song, Cena shared it with his younger brother to get feedback. John Cena's bro put his hand in front of his face and began bombing his head to the music. Cena thought it was ridiculous, so his brother then dared him to do it on TV. John Cena accepted, but waved his hand to make it more visible. Cena then added the phrase, you can't see me, to tell his opponent that they weren't on his level. How much does it cost WWE to produce an episode of Raw and SmackDown, and how much do they get paid for doing so? Between renting the arena, paying employees and wrestlers, and other production costs, one episode of TV costs between $700,000 and $800,000, so about $1.5 million for two shows. Now, how much does WWE get paid for producing their TV shows? For each episode of Raw and SmackDown, WWE gets paid around $4 million from their respective TV network. Plus, WWE still makes money off of ticket and merchandise sales and sponsorship and brand and deals. WWE has some weird rules that wrestlers must follow. For example, wrestlers aren't supposed to attend shows from rival companies, even if they are going just as fans. It was revealed that WWE wrestlers weren't allowed to attend the All In show in 2018. In a very infamous incident, a wrestler got in big trouble for attending a non-WWE event. In 2008, one half of the Highlanders, Robbie McAllister, was at a TNA show. The TV crew saw him and decided to show McAllister on camera. Immediately, Robbie got calls from WWE ordering him to leave. When he returned to the hotel he was staying at, McAllister is confronted by The Undertaker and Finley, who are mad at him and criticized Robbie for attending the rival company's show. McAllister and his tag team partner Rory would later be released from WWE a few months later. Bill Goldberg did not want to be called Goldberg. When he was trained to become a wrestler, Bill had to come up with a ring name. He ended up deciding to call himself the Hybrid. However, WCW, the company he was wrestling for, said he couldn't use it because they wouldn't be able to sell merchandise. Goldberg said he would never be popular enough to sell anything. WCW disagreed and decided to use Bill Goldberg's surname, which he's continued to be called ever since. This female WWE wrestler was showing a bit too much skin, and WWE did something about it. At the 2024 Royal Rumble, Maxine Dupree wore a pink attire that showed off all of her legs. This was a bit too much, and the next time she wrestled, WWE had Maxine wear pink shorts to cover her up. This was a crazy way wrestling fans would figure out a masked wrestler's true identity. However, this trick only worked if you were a girl. After a show, some female fans would get friendly with the wrestlers, which could lead to them sleeping together. However, masked wrestlers would wear their masks the entire time so the women wouldn't know what they looked like. After the wrestler had passed out though, the woman would grab the masked wrestler's wallet and look at his driver's license to find out the wrestler's real name and what he looked like. Many fans have accused Stone Cold Steve Austin of wasting beer because most of the alcohol landed everywhere but his mouth. Steve Austin had two reasons for why he did this. One is that he was trying to entertain people and see him take a small, clean sip of beer would have been boring. The other reason is that he didn't want to become intoxicated while in the ring since that could put himself and the wrestlers he was working with in danger. Why do WWE wrestlers use drugs? There are a few reasons why they take this risk. Wrestlers take steroids to look as big and as muscular as possible. WWE prefers this look, so there's an incentive and pressure for wrestlers to look as good as possible to get promoted and keep their job. Wrestlers will also take analgesics or painkillers. While it is scripted, wrestling is still incredibly physical and matches often hurt wrestlers. Wrestlers will then use drugs to help alleviate the pain so they can continue to wrestle, make money, and not lose their spot on the roster. The last reason wrestlers use drugs is for recreation. After a show finishes, wrestlers often have to immediately hit the road to get to the next city. To help stay awake and de-stress, wrestlers will use the assistance of street drugs. Before Brock Lesnar, several other wrestlers were considered to break The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. One of them was Edge, but the Radar Superstar refused because of how much respect he had for the Phenom. Mark Henry was also considered to end the streak. While it never got that far, Henry said he would have refused if asked. However, according to an interview that The Undertaker did with Ariel Hawani, Vince McMahon at one point won Vladimir Kozlov to end the WrestleMania streak. 
One lie changed a wrestler's entire career. In 2009, Daniel Bryan signed with WWE. Before they signed him though, the company had to run a physical on Bryan. At the same time, another promising star, Nigel McGuinness, was also being signed and had to undergo the same physical. Daniel Bryan lied and didn't tell WWE about his injuries and existing health issues and was signed. McGuinness was honest they had an injured bicep and because of that, WWE refused to sign him. Nigel ended up retiring two years later. Daniel Bryan ended up having a successful career, which included winning the world championship at WrestleMania and making a significant amount of money, all because Brian chose to lie. Did you know, Boogeyman wasn't gonna eat worms. Martin Wright, the man who played the Boogeyman character, wanted to eat bugs like cockroaches, maggots, crickets, and more. However, the arenas WWE hosted their shows at were afraid that the bugs would get loose and cause an infestation. They decided just to have the Boogeyman eat worms since WWE could control that. You'll rarely see an empty seat at a WWE show, and there's a reason why. If a fan leaves their seat during a televised event to go to the bathroom or something, WWE will have a seat filler replace them. Seat fillers are local people who sit in unoccupied seats during WWE shows. This is why WWE arenas always look sold out when the cameras are on. Once the fan returns to their seat, the seat filler will leave. Additionally, if some seats aren't sold, then a seat filler will usually stay there for the entire show. Seat fillers are not paid, but they do get to watch WWE shows for free. The only thing a seat filler isn't allowed to do is touch the wrestlers in any way. WWE facts that seem fake but are real. Ric Flair's won the same number of WrestleMania matches as Snooki and Michael Cole. Sting the wrestler owns the rights to the name Sting and actually gets money from Sting, the musician, to use the same name. Rumor has it though, the musician only pays Sting one dollar a year. John Laurinaitis has had more five-star matches than Kurt Angle and has the same number of five-star matches as CM Punk, with both Laurinaitis and Punk having two. Roman Reigns' salary in 2024 is higher than what WWE paid to acquire WCW and its video library. Paul Heyman holds victories over Edge, CM Punk, and both Jeff and Matt Hardy. When Hulk Hogan was becoming popular in the 1980s, his manager, Jimmy Hart, suggested he wear red and yellow. When Hogan asked why, Hart said those were the same colors as the McDonald's restaurants and they were all over America. Hogan agreed and he soon became known as the real American. Why do WWE wrestlers wear wrist tape? There's actually a few reasons, and it's not just to keep them safe. Wrist tape gives a wrestler's opponent something to grab onto. This is especially important since wrestlers will sweat during a match and some come out wearing baby oil, both of which make a wrestler's body slippery and hard to grab. Wrestlers can also hide things in their wrist tape. If a wrestler wants to bleed during a match, they might put a small razor blade in their tape and pull it out when the time is right. The wrist tape also helps the audience track punches. Flesh on flesh can be hard to see, but having white or black tape helps the strikes stand out. John Cena's iconic theme song actually copied three other songs. WWE Championships are not what they used to be. Traditionally, WWE's title belts had snap buttons to connect them around a wrestler's body. However, more recently, WWE has switched to using Velcro. The reason is to make it faster for wrestlers to put their championship around their waist. Additionally, Velcro also makes it easier for any wrestler to wear a championship, regardless of their size. Unfortunately, the Velcro does make the titles kind of look like toy replicas and not the real deal. This one man saved WWE from going out of business, and his last name was not McMahon. In the early 1970s, WWE hired a man named Dennis Dunn to help with television production. One night, Dennis was driving alone and transporting some important tapes containing recordings of WWE shows. Dunn's vehicle started having issues and then caught on fire. Dennis knew how vital those tapes were and risked his life to save them. He was successful, but had the tapes been destroyed, WWE would not be around today. Because of this, WWE gave Dennis, as well as his son, Kevin Dunn jobs for the rest of their lives. CM Punk tried to ban his own mother from attending WWE shows. In 2013, Punk revealed he had given his mom over $100,000, but she threatened him once Punk stopped sending her money. One of the threats was to release potentially embarrassing information about her son, which CM Punk thought had to do with him getting arrested while in school. Punk filed a restraining order against his mom, which was granted. He also asked the court to ban her from WWE shows, but it wasn't revealed if the judge granted that request.
If you notice this on a WWE wrestler's body, it means they are probably taking steroids. These pimples and acne are often a side effect of steroid use. No one knows exactly why this happens, but a theory is that steroids contribute to the body's production of immune system receptors, which leads to acne breakout. Since wrestlers usually don't cover their bodies, it's very difficult to hide an acne outbreak. Around the time Jinder Mahal became WWE Champion, his body had undergone a drastic change, and he looked very different compared to how he did less than a year earlier. Additionally, he started having noticeable pimples on his back, leading fans to speculate that Mahal had been using steroids. We see WWE wrestlers carrying around the Money in the Bank briefcase often, but we rarely see what's actually inside of it. We all know that the person who wins Money in the Bank receives a contract for a WWE Championship match at any time and any place, but is that what's really in there? Well, in 2010, when The Miz was Mr. Money in the Bank, the briefcase accidentally opened. It turns out that WWE actually doesn't keep anything inside of the briefcase, not even a pretend contract. Only three wrestlers in WWE history have a 100% win rate in the Royal Rumble match. Ronda Rousey entered her first Royal Rumble in 2022 and won. Big John Studd entered his first and only Royal Rumble match in 1989 and also won. Ten years later at the 1999 Royal Rumble, Vince McMahon entered the match for the first and only time. He pulled a massive upset by eliminating Stone Cold Steve Austin and winning the match, giving McMahon a 100% success rate in the Royal Rumble. Things WWE fans caught on camera that you were not supposed to see. When Uncle Howdy attacked LA Knight at the 2023 Royal Rumble, it looked good on TV, but footage from a fan shows they didn't connect. A picture taken shows a cameraman giving the shield the cue to be angry. At TLC 2019, Becky Lynch and Charlotte fought Asuka and Kairi Sang. During the match, Kairi got injured. Fan footage showed the moment when Lynch broke character and pushed her opponent under the ring to keep her safe. The entranceway for the 2017 Royal Rumble was so long that WWE had to drive some of the wrestlers to the ring. Shawn Michaels was paid $750,000 a year for four years to do basically nothing. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels injured his back and soon had to retire from wrestling. While he would make appearances on TV from time to time, Michaels was not used often in WWE. Former WWE commentator Jim Ross revealed that despite not doing much, WWE still paid HBK $750,000 a year. We paid Shawn $750,000 a year for about four years do nothing. Part of the reason was that Vince McMahon valued Shawn Michaels so highly. The other reason was to prevent Shawn from joining WWE's competitor, WCW. This ended up paying off for McMahon because, in 2002, Shawn Michaels returned to the ring. Shawn wrestled for another eight years and had some of the greatest WWE matches of all time. Why does Jeff Hardy wear face paint? Jeff is an artist and loves to paint. However, once he became a full-time wrestler, Jeff found it difficult to be artistic due to time and needing something to paint on. Hardy then found a solution, use his face as the canvas and incorporate it into his wrestling persona. How much did the celebrity guest host from Monday Night Raw get paid? In 2009, WWE started having celebrities host their flagship show. This included some huge names in the sports and entertainment industry. According to former WWE wrestler Hornswoggle, however, the celebrities were not paid. Instead, the celebrities were allowed to promote whatever they wanted, whether it be an upcoming movie, a show, a book, or something else. This meant the celebrities got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in free advertising. Ric Flair once had to pay $5,000 because he refused to take a picture. At the Unforgiven pay-per-view in 2005, Flair fought Carlito for the Intercontinental Championship. The Nature Boy won, and after the match, WWE wanted to get a picture of Ric with the belt. However, Flair refused because he would have to take off his shirt, which he didn't want to out of pride. WWE ended up finding the champion $5,000 for not taking the picture. WWE paid Dean Ambrose a ridiculously low amount of money for his final match. In April 2019, WWE held a special event called the Shield's Final Chapter. In the main event, Ambrose teamed with Seth Rollins and Rowan Reigns one final time. Despite this being a pretty big match, Ambrose was only paid $500. To put it in perspective, that's the same amount of money wrestlers will make just to show up at a WWE event. Things that have never happened in WWE. The Money in the Bank contract has never been cashed in anywhere except for in the ring, even though the briefcase holder can cash in anywhere. Even though everything is legal in Extreme Rules and Falls Count Anywhere matches, no wrestlers have used tasers or any type of firearm to subdue their opponents. We've never seen this scenario at the Royal Rumble. Two wrestlers are in the ring during the Rumble match with only the number 30 entrant remaining. The two wrestlers eliminate themselves, meaning that the number 30 entrant wins by default.
This one decision completely changed WWE and wrestling as we know it. In 1990, Eric Bischoff auditioned to be an announcer for WWE. Part of the audition process involved Eric selling a broom. WWE didn't hire Bischoff and Eric instead took a job with WCW. Eric Bischoff worked his way up the company until he became senior vice president and took control of WCW. He then launched Monday Night Nitro to rival WWE's Monday Night Raw, which began the Monday Night Wars. This was a major blow to WWE and they almost went out of business. However, WWE fought back by creating the Attitude Era, which many consider the greatest era in all of wrestling. Had Bischoff been able to sell that broom in 1990 and gotten hired by WWE, the Monday Night Wars and perhaps even the Attitude Era would have never happened. Did you know, even though John Cena is his real name, WWE still owns it. This means when John Cena is credited in a movie, WWE gets a cut of the profits. The reason why WWE can do this is because they own the intellectual property right on the name John Cena. When asked in 2006 if this bothers him, John Cena said, Absolutely not. Before this, I was a kid in a small Massachusetts town uh, mowing lawns for a golf course. I don't mind kicking a percentage of my, uh, my earnings to the person who gave me a chance and an opportunity. Booker T once broke a WWE rule on live TV. During shows, WWE commentators are not supposed to go to the bathroom. To avoid this, the commentators usually stop drinking liquids about three to four hours before the show starts. When Booker T joined the WWE commentary team in 2011, he did not know about this rule. During Booker's first time commentating on a pay-per-view, the five-time WCW champion needed to go to the bathroom partway through the show and did just that. For several minutes, Booker's voice was absent from the broadcast until he suddenly returned. This guy accidentally made himself the most hated WB fan of all time. Over the years, a fan had been attending WB shows and would always bring a sign that said, Jag Thin. Jag became hated when he ruined a moment at WrestleMania 30. In the main event, Daniel Bryan won the World Heavyweight Championship. While celebrating, the WB camera had a perfect shot of Bryan, but it got covered by Jag Thin's sign, ruining an otherwise perfect moment. Why does CM Punk have a Pepsi tattoo? It's not just because Punk likes the drink. While in school detention, Punk was reading a magazine that had an interview with American punk rock musician Brian Baker. CM Punk was a fan of Baker and discovered that the guitarist had a tattoo of the Coca-Cola logo because he liked the beverage. CM Punk thought it was cool, and since he liked Pepsi, Punk decided to get the brand's logo tattooed on his left arm. After he stopped wrestling full time and took a corporate job with WWE, Triple H decided to cut his iconic long hair. There were a few reasons why he did this. The first was to save time, since he would have to make sure his hair was looking clean and professional every day. Another reason Triple H cut his hair was so that he'd look more corporate when he appeared on TV, since his on-screen character was also the COO of WWE. Longer hair on a man could symbolize rebelliousness, and since Triple H was now supposed to be a corporate authority figure, a shorter haircut made much more sense. On October 7th, 2007, something happened in WWE that had never happened before or since. On that date, WWE hosted the No Mercy pay-per-view. Five days earlier, the WWE Championship had been vacated after the champion John Cena got injured. Randy Orton was supposed to face Cena at No Mercy, but since John couldn't compete, Orton was awarded the title instead. As soon as he got the title, Randy had to defend it against Triple H. The game won the match, making him the new WWE Champion. Randy Orton used his rematch clause later in the night and fought Triple H in a last man standing match. The Viper won this time and regained the WWE title. The WWE Championship changed hands three times in one day, which has never happened before or since. Crazy reasons wrestlers had to change their names. When Scott Steyer debuted his new look in 1998, he started calling himself White Thunder. However, fans complained that the nickname was connected to white supremacy, so it was dropped. When Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair made their main roster debut, they joined Paige and formed a group called the Submission Sorority. However, WWE soon found out that name led to adult websites, and they quickly changed the group's name to PCB. For a short time, WWE gave Mark Henry the nickname The Silverback. Of course, referring to a black man as a primate had racist implications, and Mark Henry asked WWE to stop. When Eric and Ivar were called up from NXT to the main roster, they changed their team name from the War Raiders to the Viking Experience. It was speculated that WWE didn't want to use the word war, but it turned out Vince McMahon just didn't like the name War Raiders. Ironically, the fans didn't like the Viking Experience, so the two names were combined and Eric and Ivar became the Viking Raiders. WWE screwed this fan. In 2014, a man named Danny won a giveaway WWE was doing alongside their yearly tribute to the troops event. The prize was a t-shirt and a dog tag set. Danny followed their instructions but never received his prize. Despite this, Danny kept messaging WWE for 10 years. The situation caught Cody Rhodes' attention and he decided to make things right. 
Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins bring their one-year-old daughter with them everywhere they go, including WWE shows. Becky revealed in an interview that during an episode of Monday Night Raw, she opened the show, then went backstage, put her daughter to bed, and then went and did guest commentary. Lynch also said that while it is tough traveling with a baby, it makes everything more rewarding and fulfilling. Have you ever wondered why John Cena will say this? Stu, let's go to work. Stu is the man operating the camera during John Cena's entrances, and he's worked for WWE since the 90s. In fact, Stu has worked for WWE for so long that Wade Barrett had to use a different name backstage. Wade Barrett's real name is Stu also, and to avoid confusion with Stu the cameraman, Barrett was ordered not to be called Stu backstage. Here's what WWE's Thunderdome actually looked like. During the pandemic from 2020 to 2021, WWE hosted their televised shows in a biosecure bubble called the Thunderdome. On TV, it looks like the Thunderdome was a mini arena. However, when you see it with more lighting and from different angles, you can tell that the entire structure is just a few stands for the fan monitors and some big black curtains behind it. Depending on the venue, WWE would only build one side of the Thunderdome and just avoid showing the empty angle on TV. WWE lost a ton of money because of a dumb decision they made. In 2014, Batista left WWE after returning earlier that year so he could promote the movie he was in, Guardians of the Galaxy. However, Batista wanted to return and have a match at the 2014 SummerSlam pay-per-view, which is only about two weeks after Guardians was released. Batista thought it would be great for him to return after being in a big movie and pitched the idea to Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. They laughed and said, we don't even know if the movie's gonna be good. Not only was Guardians of the Galaxy critically praised, but it also made $773 million at the box office and launched Batista's career as a mainstream actor. What's the shortest and longest time it took a wrestler to cash in Money in the Bank? The fastest cash in belongs to Kane. In 2010, the Big Red Machine won the World Heavyweight Championship contract and cashed in 50 minutes later to become the new world champion. At the 2017 Money in the Bank, Carmella made history by becoming the first female Money in the Bank winner. It wouldn't be until the April 10th, 2018 episode of SmackDown that Carmella finally cashed in, which was 287 days after she won the briefcase. Do you remember when fans tried to boycott WWE and it had the opposite effect? Back in January 2015, fans want Daniel Bryan to win the Royal Rumble, but more than anything, they did not want Roman Reigns to win. Despite that, WWE had Roman win the 30-man match, meaning Reigns would headline WrestleMania. Fans in attendance and online instantly made their voices heard, and hashtag cancel WWE Network started trending. You would think WWE would lose at least some subscribers to their network due to the backlash from fans. However, two days later, WWE announced they hit 1 million subscribers for the first time, and two months later, the WWE Network had grown to 1.3 million subscribers. WWE almost got sued by the Olympics. When Kurt Angle made his WWE debut in 1989, his finishing move was the Olympic Slam. The actual Olympics were made aware of this and threatened to sue WWE because they owned the word Olympic. WWE complied, and Kurt Angle's Olympic Slam was renamed the Angle Slam. This former WWE wrestler will live forever, literally. In 2008, a memory device was put on the International Space Station. It was called the Immortality Drive and contained the digitized DNA sequences of a select group of the world's brightest minds, most powerful bodies, and cultural standouts. The purpose of the drive is to preserve human DNA in the event of a global cataclysm. Former WWE wrestler Matt Morgan's DNA is included in the Immortality Drive, so long after you and I die, Matt Morgan will still exist. These businesses are named after WWE wrestlers. There's a hotel in India named Roman Reigns. I guess they are acknowledging their tribal chief. There's a car wash in Pottsville, Arkansas named after the King of Kings, but all that happens is the guy spits water at your car. In Monterey, Mexico, you can grab a bite to eat at John Cena Burgers, Tacos, and Papas. Unfortunately, the food is invisible, but all the meals are named after WWE wrestlers. Why does WWE continue to own a wrestler's name even after they leave? There are a couple of reasons for this. One is to prevent giving their competitors an advantage. AEW would have likely gotten more attention if they could have said Edge is all elite rather than Adam Copeland is all elite. Owning the wrestler's name also prevents third parties from selling merchandise using that wrestler's name. Lastly, since wrestlers know that they'll lose their name if they leave, it helps give WWE more leverage when negotiating contracts and makes wrestlers less likely to work for another company. Why did WWE ban Seth Rollins' curbstop finisher? After winning the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 31, Rollins appeared the next morning on the Today Show. During the program, footage of Seth hitting the curbstop was shown multiple times. Vince McMahon thought the move would easily be imitated by children and didn't want the WWE Champion to be a negative influence. In the aftermath, Rollins used the ripcord knee and pedigree as his new finishers. However, three years later, Rollins reopened the conversation about the curbstop with McMahon. Seth made his case and Vince allowed Rollins to use his old finisher 
finisher. However, it was shortened to just the stop to lessen the violent name and connotation. Another wrestler died the same day as Chris Benoit. On June 24, 2007, a retired wrestler named Biff Wellington was found dead in his home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The cause of death was a heart attack. What makes it even creepier is that Wellington was one of Chris Benoit's first tag team partners and they even won a championship together. A teenager once sued The Rock, Triple H, and WWE. In 2011, an 18-year-old named Raul Basham from Kentucky filed a lawsuit claiming he was injured while attending a WWE show in 2000. During the event, The Rock and Triple H were having a match and at one point started fighting amongst the crowd. According to the lawsuit, a woman got knocked over and landed on Basham, injuring his right knee. The teenager said the injury didn't allow him to compete in sports and affected his childhood. Since WWE refused to cover any expenses, this led to the 18-year-old suing the company as well as The Rock and Triple H. The lawsuit went on for nearly four years until the teenager agreed to dismiss the case. While it's unknown, it's likely WWE and or Triple H and The Rock gave the teen some money in order to get him to let it go. One wrestler main evented pay-per-views for the three biggest wrestling companies in the same year. In January 2021, Christian made his in-ring WWE return by entering at number 24 in the Royal Rumble match. Captain Charisma lasted 18 minutes and made two eliminations before getting thrown out by Seth Rollins. In March 2021, Christian made his debut in AEW and in September, the former WWE star competed in the main event of All Out for the AEW World Championship. While Christian lost the match, he did win the Impact Wrestling Championship a month earlier. Then, at Impact Wrestling's Bound for Glory pay-per-view, Christian defended the title in the main event, where he also lost. Two WWE wrestlers were able to beat the system in a clever way. When wrestlers get signed by WWE, the company will usually give them a unique name. One reason is so that WWE can trademark that name and give them exclusive rights over it. This is why most WWE wrestlers have to use a different name when they go to other companies. However, two former WWE wrestlers did something clever to get around this. The Ultimate Warrior and Ryback changed their legal names to their WWE names. James Bryan Heldlick became Warrior and Ryan Allen Reeves became Ryback Allen Reeves. This allowed them to use their WWE name wherever they wanted and they could sell it on their own merchandise. Brock Lesnar has only been defeated by nine people since returning to WWE in 2012. John Cena defeated Lesnar at Extreme Rules 2012. Triple H conquered the Beast at WrestleMania 29. Seth Rollins beat Brock at WrestleMania 31 and 35, as well as SummerSlam 2019. The Undertaker fought Lesnar at SummerSlam 2015 and won via referee's decision. Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar at Fastlane 2016, SummerSlam 2018, Crown Jewel 2021, WrestleMania 38, and SummerSlam 2022. Goldberg pinned Lesnar in under two minutes at Survivor Series 2016, Brock lost the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 36 after being beaten by Drew McIntyre. Bobby Lashley did the same thing at the 2022 Royal Rumble and also got a disqualification victory over Brock at Elimination Chamber 2023. Cody Rhodes also holds two wins over Lesnar, one at Backlash 2023 and one at SummerSlam later that same year. Randy Orton almost killed himself. In 2006, Randy Orton woke up in a hospital and wasn't sure why he was there. As it turned out, the Viper had overdosed on sleeping medication and passed out. Randy's wife at the time found him and saw that Orton wasn't breathing. Randy Orton was then rushed to the hospital where doctors saved his life. Why did Triple H spit water into the air during his entrance? When the game first joined WWE in 1995, fans said that he would never become WWE Champion. Four years later, Triple H proved them wrong when he beat Mankind to win the WWE title. After the victory, the King of Kings started spraying water at the crowd while holding the championship as an act of defiance. It got a good reaction, so Triple H decided to make it a signature part of his entrance, no matter if he was a good guy or a bad guy. There's one thing that WWE does to their male wrestlers that they do not do to their female wrestlers, and that's having their weight announced during ring introductions. There are a few reasons why WWE doesn't announce female wrestlers' weights. One is a social thing. It's an unwritten rule of society that you never ask a woman her weight. Another reason is because of weight classes. WWE has different divisions for male wrestlers based on weight, like cruiserweight and heavyweight. There are no weight divisions for women in WWE, and therefore, there's no need to announce their weight. There have been some exceptions, though. Nia Jax's weight was announced announced during part of her WWE career. This was done to present her as a monster athlete, but it did receive some criticism from fans. Someone once tried to kill Vince McMahon. Back in the 1980s, Vince McMahon was turning WWE into a national brand and running other wrestling companies out of business. WWE commentator Jim Ross was at a conference and went to the bathroom, where he overheard some wrestling promoters plotting to kill Vince McMahon. Their plan must have failed, because Vince McMahon is still alive and runs the world's biggest wrestling company. 
If a fan jumps into the ring or touches a WWE wrestler, the wrestler usually won't react, and there's a good reason why. If a WWE wrestler gets physically aggressive with a fan, they will get fined, even if the fan has gone past the barricade. Mark Henry revealed that wrestlers who interact with fans in a physically aggressive way were fined $10,000. John Cena once appeared at a different wrestling company's show while he was the WWE Champion. In 2007, the company Chaotic Wrestling was hosting an event in Bayfield, Massachusetts that benefited several charities. Cena was the special guest referee for the main event match, but he wasn't the only WWE star there. During the match, Vince McMahon walked into the ring and slapped the WWE Champion. Cena responded by giving his boss an attitude adjustment and then gave a second AA to one of the wrestlers. John Cena ruled the match disqualification and raised the hand of the winner. Did you know that there's a secret in Santino Morella's name? Santino's real name is Anthony Carelli. When he was about to make his WWE debut, the company had to create a ring name for him. They decided to pay tribute to Gorilla Monsoon, who was a former wrestler and commentator and loved by everyone in WWE. Monsoon's real name was Robert Morella, which is how Santino got his surname. Why does Hulk Hogan say brother all the time? Well, let me tell you something, brother! After the first WrestleMania in 1985, Hogan and WWE started to see a surge in popularity. Because of this, Hogan started doing more media appearances, which meant he had to talk to a lot more people. In some cases, the Hulkster would meet 100 to 200 people in one day. It became impossible to remember everyone's name, so Hogan started calling people brother instead. Do WWE wrestlers get paid when they're injured? Yes and no. Wrestlers will still get royalties from the sales of their merchandise and from the shows they've already appeared on. However, they will make less since wrestlers are also paid when they wrestle. Additionally, merchandise sales will likely decrease if a wrestler is not at WWE shows. This is one reason why wrestlers will sometimes keep their injuries a secret. However, all WWE wrestlers have a downside guarantee. If a wrestler has a guarantee of $100,000 and they only make $75,000 during the year because they are out with an injury, then WWE will give them $25,000 to make up the difference. What happened to Chris Benoit's body after he died? After authorities discovered Benoit had killed himself, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation took his body and an autopsy was done. After that was complete, Benoit's family had his body cremated. A private memorial service was held in the hamlet of Adrasan, Alberta, where Benoit's father lived. However, what happened to Chris Benoit's ashes after that is unknown. Why does Scott Stein wear chainmail and where did he get it from? In 1988, Scott broke up with his brother Rick and ended their tag team. Following this, Steiner would begin changing his appearance. During this phase, Steiner was at a strip bar and saw the chainmail. Steiner thought the chainmail was cool, and since he was already in the midst of changing his character, Big Papa Pump decided to start wearing it to the ring. The chainmail instantly caught on and became a permanent part of Steiner's appearance. WWE gave a kid $175,000. To promote the first In Your House pay-per-view in 1995, WWE ran a sweepstakes where they gave away a free house in Orlando, Florida. The winner ended up being an 11-year-old boy named Matthew Papazelli. He and his family ended up not keeping the house. However, Matthew did sell it and made over $175,000. Obvious WWE facts you didn't realize until now. Little Spike Dudley's finisher is called the Acid Drop and his initials literally spell LSD. Mick Foley's alternative characters, Mankind and Dude Love, mean basically the same thing. Dude is a synonym for man and kind is a synonym for love. The Basham brothers aren't twins and in fact, they aren't even related. Shawn Michaels character makes a lot more sense when you realize he's supposed to be a stripper. Jimmy and Jay were called the Usos not because of their last names but because Uso means brother in Samoan. The Big Show's name is a joke about WWE's rival, WCW. WCW had a show that aired on the network, TBS, and WCW's slogan was, where the big boys play. Have you ever wondered why a wrestling ring is called the Squared Circle? Long before professional wrestling was invented, fights would be held with spectators forming a circle around the competitors, which became known as a ring. In the 1800s, the London Prize ring rules were made to govern prize fighting and bare knuckle boxing. One of the rules was that the ring had to be 4 and 20 feet squared and formed with 8 stakes and ropes. This caused the ring to go from a circle to a square shape and the nickname the Squared Circle was born.